In today's video, I want to talk about the pros and cons of upgrading to the 7.3 liter Godzilla V8. We traded in the tried and true 6.2 and picked this up. And there's been good and there's been bad. So we're going to talk about, you know, the situation, what we've been finding, how the experience has been. This is going to be an honest video. I know I'm a Ford fanboy, but it's time to be honest the good along with the bad now the pulling power is a little bit better than the outgoing 6.2 engine uh, the fuel economy I would say it's about the same and you know it is a little bit nicer to drive than the 6.2 it's a little bit more power but at the end of the day it's not significant it's not that much more even though this is now the best in class for a 250, 350, 2500, 3500, whatever you want to call it. It is the best in class engine that you can get as far as the numbers are concerned. I haven't really driven the GM or Dodge versions. It would be something that would have to be done back to back, but I'm pretty sure they're all pretty close. Because, like I say, this thing is not a huge, huge leap above the 6.2. It is a little better, don't get me wrong. But it's not a huge, huge improvement in power. Granted, too, I've got, you know, this truck geared to 430. The other one with the 6.2 was also geared to 430. So maybe when some people report a dramatic improvement over their 6.2, maybe that's why. Maybe because I'm geared to to the advantage in both platforms so it really is not as much of a factor but with this truck you know the engines you know we we know the 7.3 is a little more power but also going with the 7.3 it puts us into this 10 speed transmission now this is probably my second 10 speed that I've owned my third 10 speed would be right over there my 450 but this freaking transmission and this 250 is awful. It makes weird noises. It shifts into drive really hard a lot of the time. And I think it's going to end up being an issue down the road here. So it really, really makes you think, why? For a work truck. Now I get it. Like if you want a performance daily driver and you want every feature, then yeah, 10 speed. But for us, for working... We want reliability. Ford, if you're listening, we want reliability. And the 10-speed doesn't really seem to be offering more reliability. Whereas the outgoing 6-speed was one of the most re reliable transmissions on the market. Now we've got this freaking 10-speed. And this 10-speed, like I say, I put this thing in drive and everyone in the truck has to look at each other because it freaking slams into drive so hard or reverse slams in there so hard the shifting is pretty much okay the six b was a little bit better but this transmission is the shifting and mm, i guess it's okay but sometimes you notice it does something a little bit weird whereas the six b you really never noticed it underneath there at all so i'm i'm really really concerned about the 10 speed it actually almost makes me want to just trade out of it you know it's got its value and everything and i could just trade out of it and get a different truck and not be having all these problems so what happened over the winter is i went to put this truck well, i'm plowing snow i go to put this truck in reverse and the truck got freaking stuck in drive and it wouldn't get out of drive and i got stuck with the freaking blade of snow pile of snow in front of the blade stuck on the on a, on a snow bank and I just couldn't put the truck in reverse the shifter would not shift and it was just a absolute nightmare I was stuck and I had to freaking drive it over the snow bank and just plow that out of the way and then after a while it just I just forced it I just forced it into reverse in order to get it into reverse and that was that it stopped doing it and then a later later that day it did it a couple more times and it's, it's just never done it again so it's weird it's not something that i can 
fix or get fixed because how do I diagnose or ask a dealership to diagnose something that won't happen unless all those conditions that led to this truck to do that I've never had this happen with the Ford truck before in the past but it was just real wet heavy nasty snow and it was something about that day was causing issues because I plowed with it after and it never did it again but that's just my thought process is this 10 speed is just it's cool and everything but it really should be an option and that six speed was just for the business guy for the serious guy that six speed was the transmission of choice why do we need 10 speeds for work 10 gears for work I mean honestly if you want to sell me on the 10 speed then give me like more overdrive and a lower first and second that's only for towing maybe other than that the little bit of more overdrive you get out of this 10 speed is negligible maybe 250 rpm lower and the low gear i don't know it's not doing that much for me so i'm missing missing the six speed so if i could have a six two with a six speed i'd go for that now, the 7.3, let's pop the hood and look underneath the engine. When we talk about this engine being push rod and all that, it's like, as the consumer, being push rod means what to me? I mean, it should have been that way from the start, I guess, but it is cheaper for the manufacturer to build the motor so this engine is probably cheaper per unit than the outgoing 6.2 liter v8 that had overhead cams it had a bigger chain it had bigger size it had more spark plugs it had more coil packs because that engine had not eight spark plugs but 16 it had a lot more stuff going on less power but this this V8, I, mean, I don't see why this V8 should cost more money than the 6.2. When the, when the 6.2 and this were both available, this engine was a more expensive engine than the 6.2, but it was a cheaper engine to build. So from the consumer standpoint, the main advantage to this engine is the fact that it's more serviceable because it's a little bit smaller of a package it's not really even that small of a package but when you look at this motor you can get your hands really in there to change out spark plugs or whatever and you know that's 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 it guys it's it's more serviceable now 7.3 liters of displacement is interesting uh to have this is the largest engine largest gasoline engine i've ever owned and it can tow some weight pretty good it can handle some some abuse pretty good but the problem with this motor is it has been discovered over the couple of years that it's been out that there are push rod lifter issues where the lifters will delaminate and stuff and come apart and just like GM with their push rod V8s we're trying to push too thin of an oil I think and we're trying to use this push rod technology where maybe it really wants to have a 40 weight oil or something in it i don't know if it's the rollers or what but i think my my thought is it's it's the oil weight now this engine calls for a 5w30 and ford has been having less issues than gm and gm i think they call for like a 5w20 or something thinner comment below if you know but i believe gm was running a push rod engine similar parts maybe if not even the same rollers and stuff they're coming apart and i think it's because they're running thin oil now that being said these engines that being said these engines another big difference is this has one spark plug per cylinder and the 6.2 had two spark plugs per cylinder. What difference that makes, what I've noticed with this engine, 
on hot days, like a day like today, sometimes it don't start right. Like sometimes I start it up and it makes a weird knocking noise. Like it almost wants to have premium fuel. And then if I, like I'm out working property to property and I throw this thing and drive way too fast sometimes and I'll throw it and drive too quick and freaking stall the motor. So something's different. Something's going on. Sometimes when it's real hot and you start it up, you got to make sure you like let it start up and like sit there for a second because I'm shifting it into gear too, so quick and it's just stalling out. And it sounds kind of like a weird knocking noise like a weird subtle subtle knocking noise and then it goes away and it runs normally but it's almost like this engine wants premium fuel when it's real hot out on the 6.2 never ever has that happened it just starts up and it goes now as far as this whole thing about the power and stuff being more one of the things that I notice is that Ford's running a different strategy or something with their fan clutch or maybe something was wrong with the other truck that I had with the 6.2 because this fan clutch is so quiet compared to my 6.2 unless you're talking winter in the winter time the 6.2 the fan clutch was quiet like this truck so maybe something was going on with the 6.2 but a lot of the perceived power increases that I've that I've noticed it really became negligible when the fan on the 62 wasn't running like if that 62 in the winter time like when the fan doesn't run all the time I would argue that the 6.2 runs better than the 7.3 if you took the fan clutch off like this that 62 that I had just it howled and blew unnecessary air even though the engine wasn't particularly hot or overheating it's just blowing air now sometimes the fan clutch turns on on here for a second if it's been sitting out running in the sun but this it seems like for some reason it gets rid of that coolant heat quicker it could just be because the truck is newer the radiator is not dirty and it's just maybe there's a sensor or something that was just sending a little bit of data off a little bit of bad data to the set, uh, six to and causing that fan to run because when it was cold that fan didn't run in that cold weather no fan running i would say that 6.2 probably ran better than the 7.3 it idled a little better it was a roller cam engine versus a push rod engine you had 16 spark plugs for whatever that was worth i don't know 6.2 wasn't the 6.2 wasn't a bad engine now I would think with them lowering the cost of this engine production, they would roll the savings onto the customer, but I'm not sure if that's what Ford did um, with this particular truck engine. So that's where I'm at with this. The 7.3, you know, it, it, did, it, it did what it was intended to do. It came out best in class everything, and that is, that is what it is. That being said, I mean, it's okay. It's just these are heavy duty trucks and they're just not they're just not uh they're not for play. I mean they're for work, they're serious machines and I think like a five liter engine is probably more fun. The five liter coyote V eight is probably a bit more fun than the seven three V eight. Just from the simple fact that all that stuff that's going on with that five liter, direct injection, variable valve timing, twin variable valve timing for that. That engine makes a lot more power per cubic inch. And I think down the road, Ford's going to come out with some stuff on this motor to make more power per cubic inch. I think they've kind of set this motor up, slated this motor to get direct injection. It's been said before. You look at the castings on these heads. When they when you uh, take these heads off the engine, there's, there's a dimple in there on that head for another component. And I think it's going to be for direct injection. If this engine had that dual injection fuel system that Ford's got on many of their trucks I think it would be a lot better of an engine so when that if that ever happens and when that happens I'll probably go ahead and grab that version of this truck because I feel that something needs to be done for this truck 
to be running a little bit better on regular fuel and I think that direct injection system will help because that really lets the engine run better on regular higher compression ratios inside of the motors that are direct injected better fuel economy better idling fuel economy for example if you idle a direct injected engine overnight but let's just say you got a uh, uh, 3000 watt power inverter in your truck and you lost power your trucks idling for a, for an extended period of time a direct injected engine is going to use a lot less fuel because it's not governed by the 14.7 parts air to one part fuel that the port injected engines are governed by in order to be running correctly in a lean rich lean rich threshold a direct injected engine because it draws only air in potentially depending on what a dual injected system because a dual injected system can do m multiple different modes and things but a direct injected system draws only air into the engine there's no fuel there and no fuel in the in the intake stroke so as it's compressing there's no chance or a lot less chance of a knock because it can time that fuel injection to such a later point in the in the power stroke that or the compression stroke it can time that in such a lower point in the compression stroke or later point in the compression stroke that you're able to resist knock the engine's able to resist knock and as that fuel sprays in there into that cylinder it's just giving everything a much that's why it's not governed by the 14.7 parts air to one part fuel because it can put just a minimum amount of fuel in there making for an incredibly efficient idle for example if i were to idle my diesel truck overnight which is my diesel truck is only direct injected there's no dual injection on that it's just diesel fuel direct injected if i were to idle i could idle this truck all night long even throw it in high idle and it just wouldn't burn any fuel i mean it would burn some but it just wouldn't burn as much as you would think for such a big engine spinning because of the direct injection because direct injection can just sip fuel at idle so I think that's coming down the pipeline but that's for a whole nother topic so the main things with this motor or truck that I've noticed overall the transmission I got a bad I got a, I, I feel I got a bad luck of the draw with this trans I feel that way the engine uh, it's okay. I mean, it hasn't been a problem. What I do like, you know, time for some pros here. I love the fact that it's got dual alt, 400 amps, two alternators. I like that. Um, easier to work on. Great sounding motor. Great power on the motor. E although it's not, you know, nothing crazy yet. I like I said. I think Ford's gonna. I think Ford's gonna go ahead and put uh, direct injected once the uh, another OEM comes out and bets their or beats their uh, starter up. Once there's another OEM and there's another thing, I hear a weird noise. I start it up and I can hear like something in a trans just from the engine running. I hear something clunk, so I don't know what the heck is going on with this. So I think when when another OEM comes around and can best Ford with their um, when another OEM comes around and can best their Ford's numbers I think that's when Ford releases a, 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 some kind of update with the with this engine and I think it's going to be direct injection and I think it's going to propel this motor to the best in class again I think Ford you ever look at what they're doing they're always looking to be best in class so another thing that I noticed with this truck going to a 22 is it knows whenever someone's in the seat so if I put a backpack with a laptop on this passenger seat and get into the truck it's gonna warn me or it's gonna know that someone's sitting there and it's gonna know to warn me if they unclick their seatbelt if their seatbelt's not clicked so somehow they've put a sensor in every one of these seats I'm not sure about this seat I really should put this seat here that goes up uh, this is the only one I'm not sure about but every seat in the back whether it's the middle or the 
uh, left or right, it freaking knows that the seatbelt's being worn. So I don't know if that's a government thing that is here to prevent you from, like, accidentally whatever. I don't know. I don't know. So somehow it knows. I can't really display that for you, but you got to take my word for it. I'd have to get into that seat. But, yeah, I mean, this is the outgoing model's interior. Uh, yeah, this truck has been, I mean, I like this basic interior. Comfortable seats. It's kind of a tried and true here in this department. Still got the Pro Trailer backup on it. I've never used that, and now that I think about it, I'm, a, I'm actually intending on putting a, tr a Pro Trailer on the, other, on the other truck. So, that being said, all those cons, you know... There's a lot of pros. Number one, getting into a new truck and having everything work is why I kind of did this. Instead of just fixing the other truck that got... It, the, the problem that happened with that other 6.2 is it had a water leak and it got into the wiring and it just screwed with everything. So it was getting to the point where things were just stopping from working. And I got an opportunity to trade out of it. So I, I got out of it. I went and got the F450, and I just started over. And it's kind of a tough thing. I mean, if I just go ahead and fix these couple of issues or let the dealer fix these couple of issues, then I'll be in good shape. I mean, they can mess with the trans. It's just a matter of putting the truck under. And, uh, yeah, it is uh, it is what it is. I mean, it's not the end of the world, and it is still driving good. I, I'm not super fond of the 10 speed in the gas truck. The 10 speed on my diesel is okay, but in the gas truck, I don't know. I just don't know. So, all in all, good truck. I ran a lot of weight in this truck, pushing the payload and stuff, and the, and and it did good. It, maximum of all payload. I mean, well beyond maximum payload. And the and the 73, the 73 performed well. Now. When I was pushing it with this truck, I didn't have the 6.2 at the same time to... Well, I had the 6.2, but the 6.2 was only running 2,000 pounds of salt because it had a big, a smaller unit in it. And this was running 4,000 pounds of salt. Now, oftentimes I have 5K in this truck easily. 5,000 pounds easily in this truck. And it did well. It did really well. So I, I mean, it squatted, don't get me wrong, but it freaking had the power, so... All in all, good truck. I have been enjoying it. But there are some cons when you do these upgrades. You don't always, you know, get a clean a clean uh a clean run. You know, sometimes there's a problem. A lot of times there's problems. And uh it's 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 my job to be honest and not just come out and say, Ah, it's the best truck ever. Like it's a good truck, but there are cons. But anyway guys, my name is Sean. This is DS Trucks. See you in the next video. Over and out.